Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. As always, a daily briefing, a live show of course to discuss all the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours. We got about 500 or over 500 likes on the last stream. Um, so let's try and do better than that. Let's try and get to 600 likes. So if you are just put piling in or watching this on a replay, um, as always hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for daily Liverpool content. Guys, in today's sort of live stream, we actually do have quite a lot of stuff to go over. As you can read in the title, a big Ruben Amarim to Liverpool twist plus a Brazilian wonder kid also linked as always guys you do make these live streams so do get into the to the live chat um, and let's start some conversation it can be anything related it can be do anything to do with Liverpool not today's subject as such um, but yeah just let me know down there in the uh, live chat what you want to try and direct this conversation to but if we can guys as stated let's try and get this to 600 likes that would be absolutely amazing but um, yeah guys let's um go through the first one of course today um, and that's with regards to the Brazilian wonder kid being linked to Liverpool now look as I said, whilst we might be in the midst of the Premier League title race, transfer rumours are still rife and Liverpool have been linked to a supposed wonder kid, wonder kid called Luis Guilherme. Again, sorry for any pronunciation on that one, but the Palmeiras attacking midfielder Guilherme uh, caught the eye last season with his performances in the Brazilian top flight. And now many reports are stating, including uh, the Daily Mail's Liverpool reporter, who is also a very reputable um, Liverpool source, Luis Steele, wrote that Liverpool are among a growing list of Premier League and European clubs maintaining and watching a brief on the Palmeiras wonder kid, Luis Galmere. That is according to sources in the scouting community. The journalist added before, stating that it is believed the Reds are alongside several others of European leagues, have also closely monitored his progress this year. In terms of the actual player himself, at 18, he's just 18 years old, he's already played 19 times in the Brazilian top flight, as well as making three cameos in the Copa Lipetadores, which is of course the South American equivalent to the Champions League, including both legs of the 2023 semi-finals. Liverpool were linked with the young attacker in late February also, but on that occasion, Brazilian reporter Jorge Nicola said Liverpool have sent a representative over to speak to the family of Palmeiras player Luis Guilmere. He then followed up by saying the Reds are expected to make an offer in the coming days to get the deal done ahead of the summer transfer window. However, as far as we know, that never materialised, which brings us into the question into the reporter's reliability on the subject at that time. However, as stated, the Liverpool journalist still, who is re reputable um, source within the space, said that many European giants are looking to gain the upper hand in a race to sign him. The teenager can play as a number 10 or a wide forward, and reports in Brazil say Palmeiras would demand north of £40 million. Whether Liverpool would be willing to take a chance on the youngster for more than £40 million from a Brazilian market they rarely dip into is slightly questionable. However, if they were to buy Guilmare, they would be betting a Brazilian under-20 international who is known for his dribbling ability, directness when looking to play teammates in. Um, so, guys, I don't really entertain uh, sort of transfer news at this time of the season whilst we are in the midst of the title race. Uh, but, look, listen, if it comes from a, a decent source, then I'm, I'm a game on speaking about it and I'm here to talk about it. Now, whilst this one is quite interesting for me is because, look, over the last coming days, whilst we've seen the sort of reshuffle um, of the Liverpool backroom team um, over the international break, new members coming in, a new director of football coming in, Michael Edwards coming in and stuff like that, I've been saying a lot on this channel and stated that Liverpool are going in a different direction when it comes to recruitment in that sort of post Jurgen Klopp era. We're going to be going looking or looking to try and go more and direct to the source and try and get these kind of wonder kids, all these players from um, their, their native countries rather than them allowing them to go out to sort of Benfica, allow them to go to Sporting uh, Club de Portugal or going to like Ajax Amsterdam and developing and then of course you know what it's like with the Premier League clubs, they then demand over a hundred million pounds. So as stated, Liverpool do look like they're going to be trying to be a bit more direct in this sort of new um, evolution if you like with regards to, to recruitment and as stated um, a lot of reports are stating that our new way is going through direct to the source and that's why the, the multi-club sort of network is, is very, very important for us going forward because you can acquire a club, whether that's going to be in South America, the MLS, and in Europe, and then sort of put them on a sort of conveyor belt 
Oh, and then see the player um, develop and then come into our first team. But as stated, £40 million, of course, would be a lot um, for a player that does play in the Brazilian league. But you've seen it with Real Madrid recently, Vinicius Jr. as an example. And then, of course, most recently, Endrick, where they've sort of shed out a lot of money. Endrick, in particular, I think is about £55 million that Real Madrid have paid out for him, um, but certainly has a very, very high ceiling. And, and Real Madrid have changed their business model, if you like, and look to try and go direct to the source. and, and not um, be, you know, um, pressured to, to pay hundreds of millions of pounds in mistakes that they've made in the past. And as stated, Liverpool are looking to try and go down a different route when it comes to kind of recruitment. And uh, this certainly would uh, match up with that. But as stated, guys, it is April. Uh, we currently have only got our director of football in through the door, just about. Michael Edwards is not starting work till June, um, but of course we do have a scouting department that is ever present and is constantly on the work and constantly monitoring to see if we're going to be bringing in players or looking out for young talents. So there is certainly truth in this, especially if it's coming from Lewis Steele as well. Uh, but of course it will remain to be seen if we do actually go on and sign him this summer. If there's a lot of European quote unquote giants looking for his signature in the summer transfer window, so certainly one to watch upon. Um, but yeah, I like that kind of route. When it comes down to recruitment, I like the idea of going into to straight to the source. I like going um, into that area and, and going into sort of the unknown, trying to get a players um, in Brazil and, and try and develop them and, and allow them to come, or South America for that matter. It could be a really, really good situation for us. But yeah, uh, I will leave that one there. That's all I'm really going to speak about on that report. But as stated, that's coming from Lewis Steele. As stated, is a very, very uh, reputable journalist within the Liverpool space. But guys, if you are just piling in, as always, do hit the like button. As stated at the start of the stream, we are trying to get to 600 likes on this live stream. Um, of course, get involved in the live chat, get involved in the comments. Um, and our, today's poll is Ruben the right man for Liverpool and so far it's very very early days with regards to this poll in general um, but you know they're sticking over and most of you guys 92% of you at this moment in time are saying that Ruben Amarim is the man to take us forward uh, with 7% of you saying no so it is um, the dial is going a bit further to the to the yes section um, which is good to see as well. Um, so yeah, if you uh, have reservations on the upcoming or the potential new manager, then do let me know down there in the comment section below and spark some conversation. Uh, but guys, good to see you know, David25. Good to see Gen LFC as always. Any more updates on Jota coming back? Not just yet. We'll probably get one from Jurgen Klopp tomorrow when he does his press conference. Uh, Free Speaker says, I hope we get him. He looks really good. I have watched some videos of him. Um, Little Matrix Boy says, any thoughts on why Liverpool always end up losing the most points? from VAR slash PGMOL fault is kind of killing the joy with football as it was in the Brighton match. Now, look, situation with regards to him is, is that, well, look, uh, or with regards to that situation that you've brought up, Little Matrix, yes, there is no doubt that we've probably had a lot of the VAR um, or the VAR faults go against us. And now I don't look at this sort of Premier League and I don't look at the league as to say, look, it's a conspiracy theory and people don't want Liverpool to win. Look, I'm not like that. I just think, unfortunately, we've been on the on the wrong hand of the wrong decisions. I don't think it's um, an anti-Liverpool agenda. I just genuinely just think that they're just we've been unlucky to be to be getting those uh, faults against us. But hopefully, as the sort of season goes on, it gets a little bit better. Um, but guys, we are going to be going into the main story of today, guys. As always, I've kept you waiting on this one, and that is with regards to Ruben Amarim and Deserby. But let's start with the Deserby stuff first because he looks like a potential candidate or was potentially on the shortlist um, to take over uh, from Jurgen Klopp. However, over the last couple of days or should I say the last 24 hours, Fabrizio Romano has provided an update and he has never been the front runner for the Liverpool job and is extremely unlikely to be getting the job at all. And more reports are stating that he has been ruled out entirely uh, for the race for the Liverpool managerial job. So he will not be um, appointing Roberto De Zabi despite him being linked to the club and despite him being uh, rumoured as a potential candidate to take over Liverpool. De Zerbi will not be there and it doesn't seem at this moment in time, according to Ferruccio Romano, that of course he will even be interviewed at this moment in time. So De Zerbi, it doesn't look like he's going to be taking over. 
Uh, but as you know, guys, it's no secret, this man here, Ruben Amarim, is the man that is, of course, being monitored the most. He is currently the quote-unquote front-runner to take over at Liverpool in the summer transfer window or towards the end of the season, should I say. Um, and there has been a little bit with regards to him coming out. And reports are stating that Liverpool do face competition for Ruben Amarim. Yes, people are starting to paint the picture at this moment in time. And after Xabi Alonso's announcement that he would stay at Bayer Leverkusen for another season, support immediately began to question who the alternatives may be. Now, of course, following that announcement, Sporting's Ruben Amarim is now the favourite, Bookie's favourite, and I would say, you know, doing these channels and my other channel, he's probably the strong favourite among supporters as well, that um, we would be going to get him. But a twist has emerged, and it has stated that we will face competition from Barcelona due to Xavi leaving the Catalan club at the end of the campaign. The Independence chief football writer, Miguel Delaney, said that Barcelona are racing to try and secure the appointment of Ruben Amarim in the knowledge that he has now become the top choice for a series of major European clubs. The journalist reported that Sporting have a release clause of around 11 0.1 million pounds. I stated it as around 20 million pounds, um, and he's apparently become a top target for a number of European clubs, not just Liverpool and not just Barcelona. Um, as stated, Liverpool had seen him as a part of the next best choice after Xabi Alonso, although it's understood that recent appointment of Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes in technical roles has brought some change to the Anfield club's thinking, with the role of the head coach to succeed Jurgen Klopp to be slightly reinterpreted, if it may mean they are more flexible. The Athletics' David Ornstein has believes Amarine is the main candidate, saying he is definitely in the mix, and adding that he thinks some conversations have already taken place with regards to him. Um, so the situation still is the same. Ruben Amarine is our favourite, and you know, if I'm a betting man, I would say that, of course, he will be our next manager. But of course, look, there's a lot of big European clubs this summer looking for a new manager. It's not just Bayern Munich that's been well documented. It doesn't look like they're in the race for Ruben Amarim, thankfully. Of course, it does seem as though um, they're going to be going for the Zerbi. Or I was speaking to some Bayern fans yesterday in, in person, and they seem to think that they could potentially reappoint uh, Julian Nagelsmann. So they're certainly not in the race. But look, if you're looking at it as well, Barcelona are also on the hunt for a new manager this summer. Um, as Xavi um, announced that he's leaving and yeah he seemed or emerged as a top candidate for Barcelona as a potential club that he could go to so it's going to be an interesting one look it's no forefront um, it's no conclusion just yet that Ruben Amarim is going to be coming at this moment in time and hopefully talks have obviously taken place but one thing is for certain managers top managers there is a lack of them so far going into this sort of um, summer um, of transition for a lot of European clubs but also you know a lot of clubs are also on the hunt for a new manager. If you're just looking at arguably the top five biggest clubs in the world, Liverpool, Bayern Munich and Barcelona, all on the hunt for a new manager. And as stated, there's not a lot out there at this moment in time, especially now that Xabi Alonso, a good young up-and-coming manager, has ruled himself out of the offing. If you look beyond that, who else can you really think that's actually out there that could go and take over these jobs? So it's certainly going to be an interesting summer for a lot of the European clubs. It's going to be a, a very, very interesting to. Uh, um, summer to see who actually each club appoints uh, but at this moment in time it does look like Bayern are going down the route of De Zerbi. Liverpool of course are going down the route of Ruben Amarim but the potential candidate that could battle us for his signature is of course Barcelona. Now obviously I've not really heard too much on Barcelona and they've kind of been quite quiet when it's been coming down to this sort of managerial hunt. Um, they've not really been linked to a lot of managers going into the going into the summer as we end the season um, and you're thinking well, who are they going to be going for? I can see Ruben Amarine being a top potential candidate for them as well. So um, certainly we could face a little bit of a battle to try and get him. Um, but certainly let's try and see what can happen. LFC, hidden, uh, LFC Edit says, am I hidden? Absolutely not. No, you're not. I can see you. Uh, Free Speaker says, who do we get if Ruben goes to Barca? Is there any more top candidates? Well, with Roberto De Zerbi supposedly out of the running at this moment in time, as stated, there's not a lot actually out there. That's why I really want us to go and get Ruben Amarine because... Because there is no there is no, no candidates available at this moment in time. I can't think of any real top managers that are available. Potentially, look, Julian Nagelsmann could be a potential that's out there for Liverpool. Could be a potential candidate for other European clubs. But certainly, if I had to pick somebody right now, I'm going to be going for Ruben Amarim just because I've done a lot of research on the manager and I think he would be the right fit for this Liverpool setup going forward in this post-Klopp era. 
Uh, but guys, if you haven't already hit the like button, then please do subscribe and get involved down there in the live chats. Let me know uh, what you're thinking with regards to this. If it is a straight face-off battle between Barcelona and Liverpool, who do you think will come out on top? Who do you think will get the man? Uh, let me know down there in the comment section below as stated. Um, yeah, so yeah, let's go through some other stuff, guys, as stated. Uh, the Ruben Amarim one, of course, is our main headline of today, and that is that Barcelona have apparently entered um, the race to try and land him as well. So yeah, very, very interesting on that regard. Now, whilst Sheffield United is our next battle, that is, of course, on the horizon for the Reds, we are... Well, we're not as a team, but as a fan base, we kind of do that. That's why I, I like the motto of taking it a game at a time. And that's certainly what the players and the manager will be doing at this moment in time as we're in this title race. But you can't always help but look towards the weekend. One eye on the weekend, of course, it is a big rivalry that's going to be taking place. We're up against Manchester United at Old Trafford. A lot to prove, a lot to try and um, well, try and get one back after they knocked us out of the FA Cup, probably unjustly. Um, it's a, probably a chance for us to hopefully go and uh, get the job done. But Eric Ten Hag has um, stated that there has been a uh, shortage in his centre-backs heading into the clashes against Chelsea and Liverpool this week with Manchester United confirming two new injuries. Yes, it was a busy week for the Premier League. Man United will host Liverpool three days after the trip to Chelsea on Thursday night, and they do so with a mounting injury list, with Ten Hag set to struggle to field a cohesive centre-back pairing for either fixture. On Tuesday, Manchester United confirmed that both Lissarando Martinez and Victor Lindelof would be facing around a month on the sidelines with calf and hamstring issues respectively. Rafael Varane added to that is also required to come off at half time in Saturday's 1 1 draw with Brentford, and this week admitted he had damaged his body playing so frequently throughout his career, including concussion fears. With Chelsea still to play and Varane already a doubt, it could leave Manchester United with only Harry Maguire and 19 year old Willy Kambawala as a centre back options against Liverpool this weekend. Johnny Evans has obviously missed the last two games as well with a knock, though may recover in time to partner Maguire at the back if required. However, Manchester United also currently without Luke Shaw with a fire issue, Tereo Malassia with a knee issue, Anthony Martial with a groin issue, and goalkeeper Atale Bandaya with a muscle issue. As stated, the lineup for the visit of Liverpool would deepened largely on the outcome of Thursday's clash with Chelsea for Manchester United, which is of course the same for the Reds as we do prepare to host Sheffield United. But Ten Hag, without a number of key players, is no doubt a boost for Jurgen Klopp, despite United finishing the FA Cup quarter final with a win. With with Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen at centre-back. So, as stated, guys, if I'm taking a little, little look ahead um, at the fixtures that are on the horizon, as stated, it's a big game for us against Manchester United at the weekend, and you can't help a supporters always have a little eye on that game against Manchester United, and whilst, in my mind, as a, as a supporter, I'm looking at it as a game, a game at a time, and of course, I'm not going to be... Um, rubbishing Sheffield United they could pose a threat and obviously cause an upset obviously fighting for their own sort of survival within the Premier League despite it looking unlikely they'll still of course pose a, a, a challenge and especially in this sort of three-way title race you know a draw is an actual disaster a draw is a problem when it comes to these last nine games but as stated you can't deny that Manchester United um, being without a plethora of centre-backs Lissarando Martinez, Rafael Varane, um, and I can't remember the last guy I just said, but um, who's who else is out? Sorry, two seconds. Um, oh, Victor Lindelof, of course. Um, being out is a huge boost for us, and absolutely has come at the right time. Look, I don't celebrate players' injuries. I've never done so. Um, but... You can't deny that is a big boost, and that's the kind of news you want to hear as Liverpool do take on Manchester United at Old Trafford, especially after them beating us. So it is what it is, and hopefully, as stated, um, yeah, um, hopefully they don't recover in time. I, I wish them all the best with a recovery following this game, of course, but before this game, absolutely not. But it doesn't look like they're going to have a cohesive centre-back partnership going into this clash, which is a very, very interesting affair indeed. Um, but guys, keep on piling in. Hit the uh, like button, hit the subscribe button and stuff. And um, yeah, let's start some conversation. Um, LFC Edit says, last thing I saw, the closest that true. He said, um, will Jones be available? Says LFC Edit. I think he's retired, is he not? Um, honestly, if I were Amarim, I would choose Liverpool because of the squad and academy players. What does Barca have? 
Well, I'll tell you what Liverpool have, and I don't want to become across as biased, of course. I am biased, and, and, and that will always be the stake, and I can't look beyond Liverpool, even when Barcelona and Bayern Munich are in for a manager. Um, but what I would say about those two in particular, they're very impatient. The thing that Liverpool have proved with Jurgen Klopp, we're a very patient club. And whilst it is different circumstances now that... Um, the next potential manager would have um, that Jurgen Klopp had. Of course, Jurgen Klopp had to rebuild a team. Jurgen Klopp had to try and create his own sort of dynasty. And whilst we are in a very, very good place, could potentially go on and win the league title, could potentially go on and do other things, um, I, I still think the most attractive proposition for any young manager is having that stability, having that... Um, having that sort of safety net. And I think Ruben would be able to, and he would be afforded time if he came to Liverpool. Barcelona, it doesn't usually happen. Look, Xavi's going out the door a year after he won the, the league title. Um, and whilst they said it was kind of a mutual agreement, you know, you almost feel that Barcelona hierarchy were probably pressuring Xavi to leave. So he wins the, Lally, the, the, the top flight title in his first season, a young up and coming manager, a legend of the club, um, but still kind of pushed out of the door as they had a bit of a turbulent season afterwards so very very interesting one um, indeed um, certainly one I'm going to be monitoring um, but for me personally um, red tinted glasses or not I do think of course Liverpool is the more attractive proposition for any young manager out of the three most certainly um, I honestly don't give a shit about United hope they don't finish in the top well I don't care about United either I don't want them to finish in the top six either I don't want them to finish anywhere um, I would like them to finish in the bottom half of the table but um, it's down to us to hopefully inflict a bit more pain on them coming up in this game against Old Trafford and I think our players are going to be you know chomping at the bit to make sure that we uh, get revenge after that game at the F in the FA Cup. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, in terms of news troops, that's kind of all I've really got. As stated, we are back in action this week against Sheffield United. Um, I could speak a little bit about Sheffield United as we... Um, as we sort of close off the show, if you like. Um, but as stated, I can't really at this moment in time, I'm just going to go through that form. Sorry, I, I, I do apologise. I haven't done a lot of uh, research on Sheffield United. I was going to do it more in the preview video a bit later on in the week. Um, but from my memory, they are having a really torrid time. They're currently 20th in the table, currently 15 points, minus 50 goal difference. Um, and honestly, again, I don't like to tempt fate, but, you know, if Liverpool are playing them at Anfield, Anywhere, I would, I would fully expect us to go and win, but especially the Anfield factor as well. I do fully expect us to go out there and get all three points. Look, you have to look back to the Saturday or the 10th of February when they last got their last three points. That was in a game against Luton. But prior to that, my goodness me, they've been in really, really torrid form with their last victory coming against Brentford back on the 9th of December. So they're a side that are struggling, a side that are lacking in confidence, but Absolutely, we need to put them to the sword, make sure that we win this game and, and really, really, um, you know, keep, keep pile on the misery for them because you've got to be ruthless when you're going for a title. And as stated, even draws are problems, draws are issues when you're in a three-way title race and every single team is of quality and you've got to expect or you've got to um, expect the other teams in and around you to, to not drop points. You know, we've seen Manchester City do it before where they are capable of winning nine games. So we don't want to invite any unnecessary pressure. Um, and I think, as stated, I don't think we will. I think we'll go out there and, and give it a real shot and, and make sure we win that game. Um, but Liverpool fans, um, yeah, just 25 minutes for, for this one today, guys. If anyone's not got anything else to say, um, I'll probably dip. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for getting involved in the comments. And as always, guys, just let me know your thoughts in the comments, especially those who's watching this on a replay. Let me know, um, is Ruben Amarim the uh, best possible uh, pick for Liverpool? And if not, let me know other uh, potential candidates that you would look at if, for whatever reason, Barcelona came on to, came out on top of this race to sign Ruben Amarim. But either way, as we finish this live stream, um, the question I asked you was, is Ruben Amarim the man? And 90% of you said yes, 10% of you said no. Um, so very, very interesting indeed. At least we're a little bit more together as a fan base and we're starting to get on board at the idea of having the current bookies' favourite, Ruben Amarim, being the new Liverpool manager. But thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and I will see you all next time. Take care. Peace.